I just realized I need to open this on my phone too so I can read oh. your stuff. Hey, did it tell you we're live yet? Yep, there hey, it is. Okay. Sorry. Live. I can't read your questions if I don't have them in front of me too. Right. So, Do welcome, welcome, welcome. Chart? We're going to wait just a minute, see who shows up, and we're not, we'll are not get started. Right. We'll let a few people pop on. Um, we definitely want you to ask your binding questions. Yes. Ask so, questions this time. Plan. Tell us ask. if you can't see something. Right. Oh, we're bigger on your phone than what I see my camera. That's awesome. Cool. I'm glad I didn't zoom out more. Awesome. Good to know. Do I need oh, my quarter inch light? No. You don't need it. I don't use it on binding. I'm I closer to three soon. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go ahead and just start, okay? So today we're going to talk the, about... And this video will be posted yeah, afterwards. So you can, watch so you can it always rewatch if you miss the first 10 minutes, and, or 5 minutes, or 2 minutes. You have questions. Um... We're going to go over binding, okay? Hi, we're going to talk about machine finishing, hand finishing, all preparing, of preparing your binding. So we're going to take it start to finish like three different ways. Right. I promise they won't be quilts. They're all small things. Thank all small things. You. So first an example, this is hand finished. This List. is my unicorn. It is hand finished, meaning that I sewed binding onto the front Hi, first Bonnie. and then finished it on the back with a um invisible yeah. stitch so that you can't see any can of see the it. stitching showing on my binding yeah. so that's what hand finished binding turns out to do right if you hate hand work maybe not the best way to finish quilt jen and i both like hand i love work. hand work and so for us, hand finishing a binding is an excuse to sit and watch a movie or two on the couch. Right. Plus, stuff like this, like I do all these table runners and stuff. I spend so much time at bus stops. Not these days, but normally. Normally. Or dance practice or all sorts of things. And you've probably seen my hashtag bus stop binding because I, I bind things that. in the car every day. So Jen and I are both hand binders. Right. But so I love, I love hand binding. But not everything needs to be hand bound, or sometimes you're in a hurry, or sometimes your hands don't work well anymore. This is so. True. And Mom and Sarita are machine finishers. Except for every now and then. Mom's being converted, Mom's being converted to hand work. Mom saw it by the way, so you might see her. Um, um, but Sarita is definitely a machine finisher. No, there's nothing wrong with that. So this placemat is machine finished. I'm going to show it to you. There are two ways to machine finish your binding. Um, we're going to go over both of them. This one, I sewed it to the back first and then the front. Mm -hmm. So it's really perfect. There's the back. So um, you can see my stitch a little bit. And there's the front <laughs> where Hi, Hi, there's a very narrow stitch right on the edge of the binding. I love it. Uh, Christine says she's becoming a convert to hand binding and that it's my fault. We and, it, and it totally is, and I'm I'm very proud of that. Yes, I you, you, with hand binding. I think most people love it or hate it. It's okay either um, way. It Whatever goes faster you than you think, but yeah, well, we're I, good either way. And honestly, sometimes I do machine bind. Usually, it's for customers because it's not my favorite way to do it. Yes. Also, so we're going to use our new JK Quilts Creative Grids ruler today. And that's fun. It has our name. It has and our, our logo. logo and our website. And if you want one, they're on the website now. They're eight ninety nine. Just search Creative Grids. They'll pop up. And uh, it's just kind of fun. Two and a half by six and a half inch. Great size. Catherine, Liz likes to go back to front because she wants to see I the flange that she's creating. The flange on the uh, back. I want to grab this, but it's pinned to the wall. Never mind. I was gonna, We're going to show you front to back. Grab. You in a minute. When I machine finish, I still sew it onto the front and finish it to the back. So, so we'll show both the same way. We'll show that way too. I just didn't have a sample handy in my hand. Well, I have one, but it's pinned to the wall. Yeah, so it's a, it's a pain if I really Up it on the wall at the shop. So. so two options. It's because Liz wants to control the finish and the flange. <laughs> I'm a control freak. And um, yeah. I want to control the way the front looks and still keep that really neat. So... It, it totally depends on what bothers you with the machine finish and what doesn't. Yes, this is true. Right? Both ways are acceptable. Once it, Totally. Back with what Jen and I say with everything about quilting, it is all about preference. 
Right. What do you want? You How find you what works see? for you, what you like, and you do that. Um, and yeah, we're not the quilt police. We have our preferences, but we're not the quilt police. I won't tell so. you you're wrong if you don't tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Great. Okay. We have so, been told that. That's not how you bind. And we say, are gonna start. Jenna's gonna start with. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to make how binding. To make binding. Um, you might have seen a tutorial going around the internet about a week or two ago, making this the most I'm complicated zoom in, process so. ever. Um, making binding is one of the easiest processes ever. Partly because we're gonna there, fold it several times. That's okay. Now. You don't need to see my face to do this. So I have two strips. I cut these ones two and a half inches wide. How wide it is, is totally up to you. Some people want two and a quarter because they want narrower binding. I know some people who always cut theirs three inches wide because they want a wider binding. Not, no right answer. Most patterns are probably gonna say two and a half. It's totally up to you. Um, also, this is a French binding method. Yeah, this is called a French binding. Sometimes I'll do a double fold binding, and that's totally different. But the method we're going to show you tonight is a French binding, which is probably what you've seen Everywhere. most of the time. See where it's just like folded in half? Yeah. This is the easy binding. Okay, so when we the sew binding together, binding. we don't just sew it together straight line end to end here because that creates a lot of bulk because it gets folded over on top of itself quite a bit. So what we want to do is fold it, is put it together, and we're going to sew at this 45 degree angle. Now I just overlap my selvages here because selvage isn't part of the fabric, and I usually just drop my needle here and eyeball to there. I'm just aiming. It doesn't if, have to be perfect. If you have a seam guide, you, you can aim seam perfectly. Guide, you can aim perfectly. If you don't and you're nervous, Use your little ruler, grab a marking pen, and draw a line. But I'm going to make sure to draw the line so you can see what we're doing. We're just going to sew from one corner to another corner. When I do my binding for an entire quilt, I chain piece this. So as soon as I get to the end of this one here, I'll flip it over, put it down, and put the next one on it. I do the so. same thing, and I... You see how Jen flipped it over? That way, like, the white selvage is always going one way. So my, the gr my printed selvage, selvage goes, goes the, the other, other way. And so I'm, I never get messed up. I know I'm not twisting it. Yep. It's a it's a really good little hack. <laughs> That's an actual hack. Oh, hello, Robin. Thanks for joining us. Glad to have new people. Yay. All right. And just you're for, also, you can pin it if you need to. Just for kicks and giggles, to. I'm going to pin it. Um... Normally I don't, but I, I make a lot of binding. This is true. All right. Now on my machine, I don't know if Liz has it so you can see my machine. Um, yes. You'll notice I have my walking foot on. I really like to use a walking foot with binding. Not necessarily for making it, but So for you don't need it, it to make it, but to put it on, um, it's helpful. Just because, again, we're sewing through a lot of layers, and layers can be difficult, so... Yeah, Bonnie, Jen, and I are like, and Sarita included, are um, super logic based people. And so we find patterns and tricks that work really easily. So I learned this selvage matching the opposite selvage trick, and it keeps me straight. Yeah. Every time. Yep. And, and honestly, letting it overlap like this, um, it gives you something to aim for really really easily. Yeah, I know exactly where my needle needs to drop in the V. If I had if I trimmed the selvage off already, then it would be harder to see what I'm aiming for and more necessary to draw the line. I made yeah. a scrappy binding today and I didn't have selvages to match. And it's a pain. And I overlapped anyway. Yeah, just to see it because it's faster than drawing the line. Let it overlap by a quarter of an inch. Okay, Great. then I'm just going to take my scissors, nothing fancy because this doesn't matter that much. I'm leaving a seam allowance. Catching the thread You're in just going to square off those ends, so it's not just one straight cut. You do need to cut off the little flyovers on the end yes, of the selvage. Yes, I am the shortcut queen. The reason I don't leave the flyovers on the end is because bulk. Yes. And binding is already bulky. We don't want bulk. It's half the reason we sew on the diagonal anyway. So I have it on the diagonal. Just going to press. <laughs> press it over. Now you can press it open. You can press to the side. I don't care. I prefer open. Open is flatter. Because of less bulk. Right. 
So I usually press open, but um, yeah, if you press to the side, I'm, I'm not gonna hurt you. It's fine. I might if you make me bind your quilt for you. <laughs> I might if you cut Just your binding kidding. to two and a quarter inches and then okay. ask me to finish it by machine. See, she's pressing. Sorry, I'm trying to manage this little camera back here. Right. Because I want you guys to be able to see this. Okay. So as far as the process of making binding, which really is about as easy as it gets, we have a nice long strip of fabric. She's binding something small, which is why I'm it's binding, only... I'm binding a pillow. So all I'm going to do is fold it in half and press it. Now, because I like mine to stay nice and foldy, she's gonna use I some use starch. A little bit of best press at home. This is when the steam gets turned on on my iron. Yeah, just because I make my binding when I finish my quilt, and if I don't get around to quilting it, I want it to stay pressed nicely. So I just press it in half, and that's all there is to making binding. Sheila, we've been finishing sentences for ever, ever, ever. Yeah, this is how it works. Um, anyway, this is how we make binding. Questions? We're good. Yeah, right. That's... This this is this is easy. Bind making binding is easy. There is no reason, really, to go buy binding. Yes, and it's weird text. Yeah, it's although weird. I've seen people that make bindings and sell really cute bindings out of quilting cotton. And if you really hate this part of the process, that's totally. Right. Valid, I'm, but I'm it's not hard. I'm doing this on a pressing mat right now, but at home this is like the only time besides borders that my ironing board comes out. So I'm going to skip this now. Yes. It's like a cooking show. On to the next. Okay. Now she's going... You can do the pillow back? Sure. I'll do the pillow back. So she's going to machine finish so, this to the... I'm gonna, your I, way, Catherine. I, I got ahead. This is how I do machine binding. I took it, you put the raw edges facing the other raw edges. This should make sense, right? All the raw edges go the same direction. Yeah, do not put the fold on the ugly inside. You know, I have done that though. Like, <laughs> it only lasted like six inches and then I realized I was an idiot. So then I took the stitches out and fixed it. Um, now, I've talked to a few people about what width to sew this at. That's going to depend on two things, or three things. How wide is the binding you made? Yes. How wide do you want it to appear on the outside, and how are you finishing it? Now, because I am finishing this one by machine, I went somewhere between a quarter and three-eighths of an inch, but closer to a quarter of an inch, because I want to make sure that when I fold it over to the back here, there's plenty, see there's about an eighth of an inch there, for my... Uh, needle to catch so that I don't miss spots. Oh, put it down for you. Yeah, so she just if wants to make sense. sure she's not missing it. I want to make it. sure that I'm not going to miss it. So you'll see the front is quite a bit smaller than the back. So when you do it front and front, your binding doesn't usually end up even. Yeah. That way you catch it front and back. Yes. This is why Liz doesn't like it because I need it even. Right. Liz has problems. Um... Anyway, now if I'm finishing it by machine, I mean by machine, by hand, I like it more even. In which case, also at closer to three eighths of an inch. If I'm using a two and a half inch binding, um, if I'm using a two, two and, and a quarter inch binding, then I'm still a little bit closer to a quarter of an inch, but still a generous a more. quarter, generous quarter of an inch. No, none of the scant stuff. Um, yeah, let me grab something here. Okay. Any questions? Have we lost anyone so far? Right. Okay. Ouch. Don't just burning myself. Don't kill anyone with your iron. Alive. I got the iron. You take the iron. I'm gonna stop burning myself. <clears throat> All right, silly thing. Okay. The best product ever made for binding is the binding clip. Okay. The reason I love a binding clip is it's got this nice little hump here to go over the rounded part of your binding. And it's nice and flat on the bottom, so it's easy to have that slide through on the bed of your machine. Don't try and so, sew over them. Don't sew over them. Um, so like I'll use a binding like clip where the bottom is my flat side. That's what's going to go flat on the machine. And this nice colored part is going to go on the top of my machine. Now, the reason I prefer binding clips to pins is because, as much as I love a good pin, they distort. There's a... 
there's a bigger hump there and it's harder to stay accurate when you're distorting the shape of your fabric so i don't i don't use clips that and i don't like getting pants. impaled yeah and i don't like getting impaled especially when i'm hand binding on the couch i mean i used to rip holes in my clothes with pins nope i use binding clips so instead i'm just going to use a few binding clips now i talked about binding clips last time there are clover is the main the brand that makes it i believe they're the best um, you can buy generic binding clips or off-brand binding clips for a whole lot cheaper. Um, they tend to be weaker. Yes. The springs don't hold up. And they, um, yeah, and they don't hold as tight or they hold too tight. I've got a couple generic ones. And when I grip those, they like fling across the room. Yeah. Because I've they're so tight. So we really just... I know they're more expensive and people think that they're being gouged, but Use they really are a, high a higher quality um, product. All right. Hi, Naomi. I was wondering if this was still working. I hadn't seen any comments in a while. You're good. Okay. So now for me putting in my machine, um, because I'm just going to run my stitch right in the ditch right here. And actually, I am going to change my foot so that you can see that. I say it's harder to see with a walking foot. The walking it's best to totally... do with a walking foot, but you'll see it better. But this old Singer featherweight foot, I love. I love for finishing okay. binding because it's really narrow. Um, so it's easy for me to see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to zoom in right on your machine there. Can you get in there? Okay. There's nice glare off the machine, but that's Here, okay. let's turn the light off. Oh, there we go. Is that better? Okay, so I'm going to drop my needle. Here, I'll, I'll sideways angle. so we can see. I'm going to drop my needle right here, and I'm just going to She's running right in the ditch right here. Stitch. And she'll get the finger out of the way. the binding. I'll stitch right in the ditch. If anything, I'm a little bit to the side of it because I don't want it to show up on the top of my binding. Mm -hmm. But if you flip to the back... I'm catching. She's catching the flange of the back. The flange on the back. So I'll just run along here real fast. Luckily, I quilted this in a nice light gray thread, so the nice light gray thread on my machine matches the quilting thread, and nobody knows. There we go. Well, I just told you it's not part of the quilting, but it doesn't stand out. Nobody else is going to notice. Nobody else is going to know. You guys are in on my secret, though. Okay. So that's... So I'm, I'm, I machine finished that one. Machine finished front and front again. Front and... Yeah. So I attached to the front, and then I sewed on the front. And you can see right here... It's caught it's not this. a huge flange. Her flange is very small because she sewed on the inside of the binding on the front but she did catch it all oh debbie says they're not commenting because they're being quiet and paying close attention oh okay good that's fine i hope i hope we're helpful <laughs> um but this is an easy finish like totally chris it looks easy it's because it is easy um just go steady don't go too fast that's just a little bit of thread that got stuck um and you know this is for the back of a pillow and so I just want it to, you know, yeah. it's going to get pulled against. So I'm going to go ahead and machine finish that one and let that be. Um, do you want to do yours? I got to change the thread color. Oh, we do need to change the thread. We'll re-thread for just this in here. Um, so yeah, that's front to back. Now what we're going to show you I'll show you some is, corners. first we're going to show you how to... Get the machine, get the binding onto your quilt in the first place, or your project, because it might not be a quilt. Um, how to finish it so it's exactly the right size, which is awesome. And, yeah. And then how to finish the back. Yeah, you do it. Yeah. Okay, you want this? Yes, I do. I thought you would. Oh, see, she leaves me with, like, not even a walking foot on. Like a thread post. There's a thread post. Did I take it off? I don't want the thread post. Oh, you don't want the thread post. That's right. No thread post with this one. No. It's the wrong kind of spool for that. Oh, oh but you might the... you might want my uh, bobbin case. Yes, I do. 
Just maybe. All right. Oh, it would also be helpful if I put the bobbin in the right direction. She's so helpful, you guys. I'm so helpful. There you go. Happy Christmas. June. It's not June, it's not June Liz. It's not even kind of June. It's like barely March. It's not barely March. It's, it is past March is barely almost March. over. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what day is it? What the month is it? Does anybody know anymore? Day of the week? Don't ask me. I Day of the week. We just... We... How's everybody doing? Staying home? Are we all surviving? Hi, Naomi. We're surviving. We're keeping everybody alive at our house. We haven't had any total meltdowns yet. Oh, really? Well, it's been close. When my almost 11-year-old realized she wouldn't see her friends for three more weeks, it was a little ugly. But we survived that. Yeah. Okay, here. I'll mm -hmm. take my little binding case. Cleaning a lot. Wow. Oh. Sally, you are way ahead of me because I'm like... Thank Mom's you. Mom's got you. So I had one in my case back there. That's yours. Okay. It is yours. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. I was like, I need my thread post. <laughs> the other thread holder for a featherweight. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to put the binding back to front. Haha. <laughs> this is your method. I know. It's not my method. Other people do this too. Okay, so my binding is super scrappy. Lots and lots of peaches with the pieces, which is a lot of fun. But it means I'm more likely to end up with one of these seams in my corner, which is kind of a pain in the petish, but but it's totally doable. It's not it's the doable. end of the world. It's not if worth taking everything quilt, out. You can lay it out to make sure that you're not going to end up with that in the corner. But uh here. Oh, that's a good question. Why don't you tell them why you do or don't pre-pin your binding? Because it moves. Binding shifts, and when I get to the corner, I need to be able to pull it back and come back around. Yeah. And if I've pre-pinned the whole thing, then... Then you're, you're puckered every which way. I end up puckered all over the place. And so my binding ends up smoother if I... In fact, I use one pin when binding. And I will show you where I use my one pin. But... Only one, and that Only is one. it. Okay, Hi. I am gonna start this at a point where I won't hit bulk in my corner. So here, but so when you, you at start, least one. leave a tail. At okay? least eight inches, if not ten or twelve. If it's a quilt, I'll leave twelve to fourteen because I'm gonna have plenty of room, and I want room to mess with this at the at the end to join my pieces. So you'll also notice she's starting close to the corner. She's not. She's not up no. here. She's starting close to that corner. Give a big body right here to work with to join your binding. Yeah, when we finish the binding and we're going to join it, you want a 10 to 12 inch space. If I'm doing a quilt, sometimes I'll leave 14 or 16. So here where my, I'm only 18 inches total, I'm going to start pretty close to the corner. And when I come around the corner, I'm going to end only like three inches in. And you'll see why, but it really does make it a It really does help. For me. Mm hmm So. Yeah. Your walking foot's different than my one at home. So, I'm guessing... Well, the one at, your one at home is a Bernina. I know. This one's a little over three quarters of an inch, a little under three eighths of an inch. Not three quarters, one quarter. Good night. Okay, this is also where I backstitch a little bit. Yep, because we're going to pull. Because I'm going to pull on it. So, I backstitch here too. Yep. Okay. So, we're going to just go... I'm going close to that three eighths of an inch. Holy cow, and I'm going to lengthen her stitch because this is going to take me all day. Um, <laughs> now, when I get almost a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch-ish from the corner, don't go all the way to the corner. Nope, don't do it. What I'm going to do, and I've taught people this trick, not everyone does this, it's a thing I do. I'm going to pick up my press foot, leave the needle down, I turn it on a 45-degree angle, to where the point of my project is right, right to the corner out of the needle and I will stitch to the corner not a necessary step but I'll show you why I like to do it and right? normally we wouldn't cut thread here but we're gonna do it just to show you what we're doing I'm gonna do it see where I put that 
that diagonal line right there, it's going to help me because now the, what I need to do is pull this back and I want it at a 45 degree angle. And because I've stitched that down at a 45 degree angle, that corner is set. It's locked and in it's place. And it's going to lock the corner and it's going to keep that seam nice and strong right there. So now you can't screw this up. Yes. Well, not really. Well, so you probably I could, it back but don't do it. At 45 degrees. Okay. Uh huh. Now I'm going to fold it back this way. Sorry, I'm working upside down, so it's a little backwards. I'm going to fold it back down this way. Okay. So I still have that 45 degree fold. Pull it back and come back down at 90 degrees. Right. Okay. This is the only place I'm going to use a pin. This is it. Okay. And another trick for myself. Here's my seam. Okay. I can see my seam. I'm going to pin it right there Her where my kind seam of in is. Way, but she'll okay. Move it. It's right there where my seam is. And so what that tells me is that my needle needs to start right here. So you can start all the way at the edge. You can. I prefer just to start right there. I just know where my fold is going to be. Right. You need to start at least there. At least there, if not behind. I tend to start all the way from the edge, and that works just fine for me. But it just gives me my starting point. Yep. To work from. Okay. But locking that corner can be super, super helpful. Same thing, though. I backstitch here one or two stitches. Because when I fold it over to the other side, there's going to be a little pulling. And Again, we're going to be it. tugging. So I know a cool thing we don't backstitch. Binding Here. is a totally different ball game than piecing. I do. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing. Holy cow. Did I shorten? You shortened. Push? You got to push it back down, honey. Oh, my goodness. Wow. You're up at like a 30. I know. Get down. <laughs> this is going to take all day. <laughs> we, we want the binding on. We don't need it to do that much. Oh, my goodness. But does that corner thing make sense to you guys? So I far, find so good. that it helps me get a really accurate 45 degree. Oh, good, Sally. She, she learned that this week and that's all. So, like I said, I get near the end. Usually I'll start using the, uh, it's not called a hand crank. The uh, flywheel. flywheel. So I don't get yelled at. <laughs> to get right into place, okay? All right. And I like to snip my threads because it drives me batty to have threads everywhere. Hanging yeah. all over the place. So, so turn it. Yeah. So I'm going to show you from here with my hands because if you're doing this, this is the direction you're going to do it from. So when I teach this in my class, I like to be a little dramatic, but we flip it all the way up. You're going to flip it all the way up. That's how you get your 45 degree angle. Okay. And then you're going to flip it all the way down. All the way up. Don't pull this down too far All or it's going to be too tight on the back. Right. Okay. You need this much to work with to have what you need on and the then, back. And then a pin right there. You don't have to pin if you don't want to. I usually don't. Liz likes to. Um, again, I usually will start right up here at the edge, but you can start right down there where your fold is. Not a right answer. Do what you like. Just don't start any further down than that or you'll have area that's undamaged. Otherwise, you'll have un stitched spots okay i also am assuming that i made my binding long enough so i hope so i <laughs> hope i didn't mess that up otherwise i'm oh, gonna have to go get you a strip of something um okay chris it doesn't matter it, as far as starting back side or front side i'm starting on the back because i'm gonna finish it with the machine on the front if i'm gonna finish it by hand i do it on the front and then finish it by hand on the back mm -hmm. so it really just it just depends on where you like. Depends if you get on... a machine, finish it. It depends on whether you want your flange on the front or if you want your flange on the back. Yeah. So if you're machine finishing, that's the difference, whether you have a flange on the front or a flange on the back. If you want a flange on the front, you start it on the back. If you want a flange on the back, you start it on the front. If you're hand finishing, it doesn't I... matter. It just depends whether you want a hand finish on the front or hand finish on the back. I prefer to hand finish on the back because then my front is pristine. Perfect. And I'm all about, you know, things looking perfect, even though we all know my life not. isn't. Right? Right. My life is not perfect, but my stitching can be. Yes. Or at least my binding. So, yeah. Like I said, Jen and I travel a lot with binding because we're hand finishers. 
And we both travel and with we little have small um, kids. With small kids. And um Miss you too, Louise. We both travel with little binding bags, right. binding kits. And um Where'd you just go? Oh there's right is. there on the quilt. So she's got a so, little quilt. This is my binding kit. It's a little bag. It's a Sherry and Chelsea walkabout bag, but there's all sorts of these. I always have spare needles in it. My thread that I'm binding with, a small pair of scissors, a thimble. and a thimble. This is my favorite thimble. Mm -hmm. It's a clover thimble. I'm not flipping you off. I just always use it on my middle finger. See, and I use it on my ring finger. Um, but I like it because the silicone grips to my finger, but I have a metal end. Um, I've used the leather ones. I've used the rubber dots on the finger. And um, I've managed to poke through because I like really fine needles. Yeah. So I love, this is my preferred thimble. It comes in four sizes, actually. So. Right. Sorry, I was holding it up too high. Anyway, clover thimble, it's my favorite. But this goes with me along with my project with binding clips attached. And then I throw my clips in here as I get done. And then they go in my handy dandy jar at home later. Right. But. That's, that's how we do this. Jen and I do the same thing with our applique. In fact, my applique thread is in there at the moment. Oh, see, and I have a separate applique Because I just bag. finished with my applique. Because I have to have, you know, scissors and thread and needles. Yes. And that, though yeah. I did have to buy a second thimble for that because... I have bought, I don't know how many thimbles because I go through them. Or I lose them. Well, they get lost. I it's like them. seam rippers. I've got a few of those because they get lost. And you got to have your seam ripper. Plus they're like four dollars. Okay. Do do I'm do, oh, do. Okay. actually I need close to the end. So I'm gonna show you. Because we need to talk joining. We do need to talk joining. Because that is the biggest question I get about binding. Right. And honestly, once you learn how to join this way. You're going to love it, and you're you're just not going to do anything else because it's so nice to have your binding be exactly the right size. Yep. It's just, it's the best. Last corner. Yay. And then I'm going to sew three whole inches. Wow, I did really burn my arm. Nice work. You know, that iron's mm. really hot. You could turn it off. We're kind of done ironing. I can turn it off. We're done ironing. Okay, last corner, same thing. I locked my stitch with my diagonal line, flip it back, and I somehow got really lucky, and despite all of the joints in my binding, I missed them all on corners. Sweet. And on my, you have a nice long strip to finish. On my, it, well, yeah, and look, my binding is exactly the right length. This never happens. My uh, All Hallows Eve quilt over here, I think I have, it's a full-size quilt, and I think I have connections on two corners. Nice. Because sometimes I get extra and not lucky. Yeah. Sometimes life just has to be that way. <laughs> it's just mean. Yeah. Just one of those big fat and darn it type moments. Right. So, that's okay. Life goes on. Could be worse. Okay, but... I'm going to sew about three inches, lock my stitch, and pull it out. Okay. Because... Oh, I guess I should pull my needle up. Yeah, that helps. Um, we're going to talk joining. Oh, it's because it's not locked. Yeah, I know. I was trying to lock it. There's a couple different ways to do this. But what we're going to do is make sure it overlaps just right. Tip for burns. Yes. Aloe vera in your sewing room. That is smart, Bonnie. I keep lavender in my sewing room. Lavender oil works great on burns, too. Yep. But yes, I'm going to snip this because I want it to lay nice and flat. And it's overlapping by a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to cut that off. Mm-hmm. Okay, because we did, we, we I'm going for accuracy here. Yep. Okay, so I've got my two pieces that overlap gonna a move. good distance. Okay, I'm going to get that mat out from under it so it's nice and flat. So they're overlapping, and I want to pull them to where they're nice and tight. Okay? There's a lot of ways to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. Now, I just tend to eyeball whatever's the middle of that. Okay? And that's about right here. 
and I'm going to pull it tight because you don't want that extra eighth of an inch here. No. Nope. In fact, if anything, pull it a little extra tight. Right. If anything, leave some extra. Because. Or, or take out Yeah, don't extra. take ex extra. I'll, I'll, sometimes I'll cut mine an eighth of an inch short. Yeah. To me, it's like a border on the outside of a quilt. Cut it an eighth of an inch short, if anything. Do not let it be extra. But I'm going to take my little handy two and a half inch ruler, because that's the width of my binding. And I'm going to mark that two and a half inch center. Now, I mark mine up all over the place. I Jen don't mark doesn't anything. mark anything. But I'll, but before you cut, I'll show them how I do it too. Okay. But I mark the inside corners just so I can see for sure on mm -hmm. the top of mine, on the top piece. And I mark the outside of the fabric on the bottom piece. And there is a reason for that. Yep. And I mark nothing. And Jen marks nothing because she likes to eyeball it. Yep. But if you're uncomfortable eyeballing... Okay. Lay it back over the top of each other. Okay, so when I finish it up like this, I, do, I also pull it tight. Now, where's that piece you snipped off? Here we go. It's an eighth of an inch. I know. I use this as my handy dandy measuring tool. So what I would do is I would cut off right here, just the extra. I would then lay this on top like this because this is the width of my binding. Pretend this right here is cut off. Then I lay this over the top. And, and I'm not going to cut. And I just cut. I would just cut right here. And then she has those exact. So that's lengths. how I figure out my overlap. I don't use a ruler. I don't do that. I just, I use my binding as my measuring tool. So if it's three inches, two and a quarter inches, two and a half. Yeah. That's my measuring tool. Um, it's a great trick. I prefer to do it this way yeah. because I want to be able to double and triple check before I cut anything. Right. I just wing it. So, so there you go. Anyway, that, that's my measuring trick. That's Jen's measuring trick. This, um, this is mine. But my point is you want a lot of bedroom to work with because I need to be able to pull these out. So we're going to join these pieces just like we did the rest of the binding. Okay. So this one, I'm going to open up down to, uh, the, the one on the bottom where we started is right side up. The one where we're finishing is right sides down. Okay, this is why I need room, because I need to be able to finagle my piece so that it to lays get them to lay flat. just right on top of each other. They need That's to lay too close. flat, but I need to be able to lay it flat. And I draw my four corners; they're hard to see on this navy fabric, because then I can line it up, and I know that's exactly where I need it to be, because my corners, my four corners, are all matching. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that that is why I do it that way. Because then I get to be nice and accurate. This is for the fastidious quilter. Yes. Or if it makes you nervous to just go ahead and right. cut. Right. If it makes you nervous to, okay. to just willy-nilly slice it off, then then yeah. And then I'm going to go ahead this for you guys and draw my diagonal line. And now I know where to sew those two pieces together. Okay. So we're going to come back here. See, this is why you need room. If you've only right. given yourself a couple inches. Right. If you only have four inches open, you're in trouble here. You're going to have to take out some stitches or you're really going to fight it. I mean, which we do when we do like mug rugs and stuff. We fight it. It's possible. <sighs> Sorry for the yawn, but it's not fun. So fight it only when you have to with a mug rug, but don't, don't fight it. If you've it got a bigger piece, don't Anything do bigger than that. Okay. I just sewed over a pin. Don't I saw again. that. I saw it. On my machine, even. I know. <laughs> it's okay. She's 81 years old. She's tough. Okay. So, also, if you feel like making sure you did it right, don't cut yet. Open it up. Does it lay flat? It should be a little tight, but not curling up your thing. Because it's got all that bulk in there. It's going to feel extra tight. It hasn't been pressed but flat But you yet. can see that I've got pretty much the right length right there, okay? So that's where the scissors come in. These perfect scissors are like the sharpest things in the world. They're micro serrated, so they're pretty amazing. Okay, they awesome? and then you can take this over to your ironing board or your pressing mat and press it. Um, I usually don't. I'm going to finger press it because that's how what I do. Well, because you're about to sew it anyway. And I'm about to sew it down and fold it in half anyway. So it's right there, nice and finger pressed. And I've got it right there. 
If you want to, you can pin right here just to keep it down. Right, because um, it's not as pressed as the rest of it. Because it's not as firmly pressed. I'm not going to. Hi, honey. Sorry, how's my husband? Anyway. Hi, Eric. I'm not going to call you honey. Please don't. Okay, but we're going to go back to, and this is where I back up a little bit from before where I finished. Right. Because I don't want to miss anything. Sorry, I moved. It's okay, I and got we're, you. We're just going to finish it. That easy. She's using her fingers there to keep it pressed as she feeds it through. Okay, and I'm not going to backstitch at the end because I just went past you where went it needed to over. be. So now my binding is all the way on on one side. So this is the same process, whether you're going to hand finish, um, machine finish. Sally, they're called perfect scissors. Yeah, they're... They're perfect scissors. There's the little green ones. There's the big purple ones. Oh, okay. God. They're, they're kind of expensive scissors. She just left me, and I have no idea where I'm hitting on the camera. You're fine. Just so. where you are. Anyway, so my binding is all on 100%. Like I said, this is the exact same process, front or back, whether you're going to hand finish, machine finish, machine finish front, machine finish back. Either way, that is step number one to get your binding on. Make sense? And then my binding is just perfect. Okay, Sally. Perfect scissors. There's the little tiny ones. These are fantastic, especially if you're cutting out tiny pieces or tiny bits of things. And um, these are the mediums. The, they have some other ones mediums. too, We've got but bigger these ones are too. Uh, the micro serrated. Yes. So they're so darn sharp, and, and they're no effort to squeeze. None. That's the best. So part. they're fantastic scissors. So they're easy do. on your hands. Really like them. Okay. Do you want to move that? Move what? So now I'm going to show you turning the binding over. All right, I'm, I'm on your mat. Okay, so. so if you're gonna, where's your clips? I'm borrowing Jen's clips. And I just put a pile of them on top of my project. I don't start at a corner. Nope. Okay, I start in the middle. And depending on how I'm gonna do this, if I'm gonna hand finish it, I'll put the bottom on the top because it keeps, on the loose end, yes. it, keeps, it keeps it nice and super duper flat. Yep. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you that way. I also like to clip where my joined seams are. Yep. Because they're bulky. Yep. So I try and stay fairly equidistant, but I make sure I hit my seams. Does that make sense? Yep. How do you do your corners? Okay. So I do my corners. I'm going to come right here and do it on this side and have it nice and flat. Okay. Do you or care about where the side? bulk is on your corners? Do I care about where the bulk is? Do you alternate the folds? I do not. No, watch. What do you, do you know do what I, I mean? Alternate the folds? Do, I, do you alternate the folds? I'll show you. Oh, no. Well, this way I've got the bulk going the same direction on both of them. Yeah. So you can... So I've got the, the bulk of my... Wow, that got messed up. Okay. The bulk of my corner right here is on, is on this, this side. side. So she's talking about alternating the folds, and you can do it either way. Because the bulk is on this side right here, she's talking about if you fold it first on this side, and, and then, then over back. on this side, then I've got the bulk over here on this side, and so that it, it keeps the bulk. It makes for a neater corner. It's a little flatter. More even. Not necessary, but a nice touch. Yes. So it's, once again, if you feel like paying that much attention, which is totally valid, Right. If you don't, also totally valid. Right. I, I don't care. Your choice. I'm just going to show this up front here real quick. Because this is what it looks like if they're both on the same side. This is when I started hand finishing, but I haven't finished. And this is where it's on both sides. So if you just squeeze it with your thumb and forefinger, you'll feel that this is flatter than doing it this way. Not a big deal. One way or the other. Your choice. But it's a fun little... New thing to try if you haven't tried that before. Yeah. Gotta make something simple more complicated. Yes, <laughs> yeah, they are the best scissors. You are correct. I tell you, they're awesome. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this whole thing. I don't know why, but I am. 
So uh -huh. this one, I didn't clip the seam right there, but that's because I'm on both sides of it. Right. So I like my corners to be like super exact. Yep. That's um, what I care about when I... To where I have an exact... It's hard to see because those two fabrics are matching up. Let's get to a different corner. The, the pink is easier. Can you see it? So she's got it to where they match up. And just not right a lot on of overlap on one side. Not or a the lot other. one way or the other. If you've ever had a quilt judged at a quilt show, they will comment on this. Um, they will also comment on whether or not you back into your corner and finish it. Which uh, the I small do by hand, but not by machine. Micro serrated. Yep. And so they don't look like serrated scissors, but they are. And they cut like it because they're super, super crazy sharp. So they're really pretty fantastic. Okay. And even when I'm machine finishing, I don't start on the edge. I start in the middle. Nope, still start in the middle. Um, because I can adjust into the corners. I yeah. can't make any adjustments in the middle of the project. Do you want the walking foot for finishing or do you want yes, the do. thin foot? I'll, I'll take the walking foot. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. I was going to be nice and change it for you. That's okay. Okay, so to finish it, we're going to start. When I finish it right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew probably a sixteenth of an inch in over that fold right there. I want to just catch the fold. The goal is that I catch the fold and am on the back side of the fabric in the back. Yep. Of the, but the chances of actually hitting that perfectly all the time are slim to none. Right. So it's usually gonna be a it's little wobbly little on the back. In the back. It's gonna look a little wobbly on the back, but I don't really mind that. Well, I kind of do, which is why I hand finish everything. But um, but to me, it's better than having potentially a big flange on the back because that makes me bonkers. Okay. So it's all about what what works for you and what doesn't. Yeah. Seriously, what bugs you about machine binding? Decide what that is, and do it whatever way avoids that. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm going to turn the light on so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. But okay. I am here. Can you see that? Let me look. Let me see where I might. My needle right here. Oh, well, let me go a few inches. Sorry, I'm zooming in and it's a little shaky when I do that. There we go. Just keep your hand out of the way. And you'll be fine. So I kind of have to hold the fabric. Let me get a little further and you can see where my needle is. Better. You see that? Yeah. So I've just barely caught the edge of the fabric right there. Mm -hmm. It's a very small flange on the front. Yeah. I try and make it next to none. I'm almost sewing on the fold, but making sure I'm getting it. But mm -hmm. I'm for sure covering up my seam on the back right so you can see like right here the seam from full sewing it onto the back i want to make sure i've got that covered right because i don't want seams off of the binding on the front right for me and jen's gonna critique how i'm doing it's looking good Actually, you, you haven't hit your binding yet. I'm, I'm right on at the moment. She's so. doing great. You can see that. She's basically sewing right almost in the ditch right here. At some point, she probably will catch her binding, but that's okay. Okay, so she's This gonna... is what I need. Oh, I brought one, too. Oh, just use my uh, seam ripper. I was going to say. If you have, like, a purple thing or a all... This is a great place for it. It's just to kind of hold that or fold stiletto, down. whatever you or want to call it. Or um, stiletto. You can always, like she just did, lift the foot up, readjust, oh. and uh, then put the foot back down. But it's a good place to have a stiletto or an awl. To make sure you're getting... Or a purple thing to make sure you, that you're falling into that corner. Now what you'll notice she did is she sewed to the corner there. Left her needle in place and then turned. You don't need to sew off the edge or pull up or anything. Um, just sew right into your corner and then rotate. It's 
Still looking good. So this is how you machine finish on the front. So pretty similar to what you do on the back. Either way is good. It's nice to get your corners. Um, all right, so and normally my thread would match my binding, but because I have a scrappy binding, it is what it is. Right. Right. If you have a scrappy binding, that's just how life goes. I love the scrappy binding. All right. You want to talk stitching? Yeah, let's talk. I can be done with this because you've seen what I'm doing, right? We're Ready? good. Right? Let's talk hand finishing. Jen's going to show Here's you a how hand finisher. Other people, not just me, right? Your project. And I'm going to All right. I'm, I'm finishing my over. cow. Isn't he fun? You guys can't see it, but that's okay. I am finishing my cow. Um Now I love to hand finish. I'm a hand finisher. That's that's my thing. Um I like hand work in general. You'll see I've just got binding clips everywhere. Yeah, I bind. I put binding clips all the way around. All the way around. Most people use like three binding clips, and they're good. Um, my thread's about done. So, um, anyway, the stitches I do, I it depends on my mood, but there's two. I will either just do. There are a lot of names for it: a binding stitch, an applique stitch, a whip stitch. Uh, people call it all kinds of things. Basically, it's just a really narrow stitch where you come in on this. On one side, come out the other side. So you're working both fabrics at the same time. You're working both the quilt and the binding fabric in one narrow running stitch. Okay, that's probably your most common stitch used for binding. Yes. If I'm wanting to be a little more invisible, generally use the I will use a ladder stitch where I work one fabric at a time. So, I'll, so I'll she go. just went through the edge in, of the binding and the down quilt, through the quilt. In the fold of the binding. And after doing a few of those, pull it tight. I'll just pull it tight. That, it's slightly more invisible than your um, standard binding stitch, but it is a little slower. It just depends on my mood that day. Really? I do both. So, yeah. Depends on how I'm feeling. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tie off here and I'll show you how I like to start and finish. Well, I'll show you how I finish. So my thread's about done. So what I'm going to do is go into my quilt, pull my binding back a little bit and come out here below my stitch line. That's when I take my binding clip and cover that back up so that it holds that in place. So I don't have to worry about holding a lot of tension here. And then I'll just come in. Grab a little bit of fabric, just a little bit, and uh, make, make yourself a, knot. a little knot. Just run, basically run through this loop, and then I just leave my tail in my binding. It's just gonna get buried in there, so it doesn't matter. Now, when it comes to using the thread, don't don't go for long thread lengths. No, the instinct a lot of times, especially if you have trouble threading a needle, is to use a lot of thread. Um, that's where you're just going to get tangled. It's going to get broken. It's going to get frayed. Oh, out. You're just going to have a rough go if you use long lengths of thread. If you have trouble threading a needle, we have a lot of great needle threaders. Um, and if we don't have the right one for you, we'll get it for you. A tip from my friend Judy, lick the needle, not the thread. Make it slick for it to go through. Another fun fact about needles is that they are die cast. So meaning one side is going to be rounded and the other is going to be flatter. Uh, so if you can't get it through one way, try flipping the needle over. This is true. They're pressed. The holes in your needle are pressed. Yep. So if it's just not going in, or in this case, your thread is just fraying. Clip She'd like to pretend it. that this doesn't happen to her, but it does. It does all the time whoa 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 what did you do i turned it the other way sorry <laughs> this is why we should probably just leave the camera alone when we do this no it's just hard when we're doing stuff up close so she's so how to tie a knot ready okay there are a lot of ways to do this i lay my thread i don't know if you can see this 
Put over, it down. Right here. I lay my thread on top of my needle with the tail pointing at the eye. I pinch that. I wrap it around a few times. Then I move my little pinch up to cover that thread I wrapped around. And I just pull through. And now I have a knot. Fastest little knot ever. And... She takes her clip off. I take my clip off. I'm going to come in similar to where I came out here on the left. I'm a right-handed person, but I'm still going in on from the left here. Just so that my knot is nice and buried. And then I'm going to come out here about two stitches back from where I left off. Just to, just to cover myself. Christine, what didn't you know? I don't know. I don't know what Christine didn't know. Something. I don't know. Okay. Back to my thimble. Unlike Liz, I'm a ring mm. finger thimble wearer. Um, Whatever I, finger what, you beat up the most. And, and every push now and then, I'll like be fighting against my thimble. So I'll be wearing my thimble on my ring finger and then start pushing everything with my middle finger. So then I move my thimble. Oh, the eyes and needles. Huh. Oh, it is a fun random fact. Fun, fun fact. You learn something new. Congratulations. It's always good to learn something new. Keeps our brains functioning, right? Um, but honestly, hand binding goes pretty quick. I like to do it just, you know, like Liz said, sitting on the couch. When my husband says, would you please leave your sewing room and spend some time with me in the evening after the kids go to bed? I say, sure, leave the lights on. We can watch a movie. Um. Sorry. Why won't it let me zoom out? Because this is what I'm doing. Oh, because I'm too close. Ha <laughs> ha. She wants to zoom out, but she hasn't moved the tripod. I'm smart Silly cookie. Silly girl. I'm not. That wow, smart. that was fun. I just saw your little zoomy thing. <laughs> Whoa. <Sorry. laughs> I apologize. We're, we're clearly you know, wonderful Sally, videographers. I didn't used to use thimbles until I was applicating and I had to bind like three quilts in a week. And then yeah, I, um, I don't always use a thimble. If I'm doing something small, I don't. No. Um, but if I'm doing a lot of handwork at once, I will have holes in my hands. Yeah. When my needle keeps starts going into the same hole in my finger over and over again, I have to go get my thimble. Right. Usually by the time I get blood, the, the thimble is a must. Yeah. But I don't use one all the time simply because my hands are calloused enough that I... Right. But I also like to use tiny needles and those... The, the dull end will go into my finger. Right. Right. When you use such fine needles that the eye goes into your finger um, easily. It's great. So talking about needles... You can use whatever needle you want. Right. For this, I say whatever needle you can hold and thread. Yes. That's that's all I care about. So, um, I, like I said, I use itty bitty milliners in between, like, needles. Um, I've seen people that use long, almost embroidery needles. Right. But, uh, Honestly, whatever you can hold and thread whatever for binding, thread. it's not a big deal what needle you use. I like fine needles because it's less effort to push it through the fabric. Right. The fatter the needle, the more pressure it takes to push it through the fabric. But if you can't right. thread one, you clearly can't use that. So use a bigger needle. Right. Some people like really long needles so they can do like four stitches at once. And yeah. Yeah. It's... I eventually break and snap my binding needles in half. Right. And that's I, okay. I tend to pull hard. So I break needles. I bend needles. Mm -hmm. I break thread like crazy. But that's another reason I don't, you don't use a long thread. The more times it goes through over and over again, the more the thread will wear. Right. And the so more likely it is to snap on you or to knot itself up. Right. So, oh, and also, I didn't bring it with me tonight, my bad. Um, I usually use beeswax for my thread. Um, just running it along the beeswax just because it, well, it conditions the thread a bit, but it also keep, just keeps it from um, tangling up. I just don't get the knots when I use the beeswax. And for, like, this polyester thread that I'm using to bind right now, um, it it's a little rough. And so it um, it helps it run through my fabric a little smoother. Yeah. You might have heard of, like, thread conditioner. Beeswax is the same thing. It's just a fully natural product. Right. This, this beeswax that we have in the store actually came from my father-in-law's bees. He raises bees, he gives us yeah. honey, and he gave me a bunch of beeswax. So, um, I, uh, 
when I use the beeswax, I just take my thread and run it along the side yeah. of this just to coat it with beeswax and then I'll just throw, roll through it. Um, the thread that I use, I usually use a regular 50 weight yeah. art fill. Um, sometimes I use this in Tressa if I need it to be just the right color. Right. A 28 weight thread is also good. Don't go super fine. I don't use right. This is not one I skip. I got it. Oh, um, oh. I use. I don't use, use the eighty right? weight that oh, I like for applique. Oh. Simply because it breaks way too easy and it's too fine, and I really want it to hold in place. Right. So this is mom's beeswax, so I can actually use it without messing with it. But the way you use it, I'm gonna cut a new piece of thread. Is you take your thread. I'm gonna come on here. I lay it just over the edge of my beeswax and I just run along the edge. You can see a little cut in the beeswax where I ran it through. And then I'll just run my fingers over it. It's always a good idea to kind of massage your thread a little bit anyway because it has been on the spool so it's wound tight and this way it, it relaxes. So again, you're less likely to get the, um, it's tightly wound, it needs a massage. Mom's making fun of me. Just, just like me. It's just like us. It's tightly wound. It needs a break. Anyway, but that's thread and hand binding. Did we cover it all? I think so. Any questions? Questions. This is your chance. Right, because we're here with questions. So we can take questions right now. Let me yes. my thread right there for a second. Okay. I'll get to it. I'm almost done with my cow. Anyway. Oh, do you want to tell them about Saturday? Ooh, Saturday. Okay, so Jen and I are planning... <laughs> exactly. Um, Jen and I are planning to do a short demo on half square triangles, four ways. Four different ways to make half square triangles. On Saturday. The worst ways to the best ways. Yes. Worst, favorite, things you have to do to make sure they're perfect. Um, and why are we doing half square triangles? We're doing half square triangles because with any luck, I will have my half square triangle alice in glass multi-colored lots of crazy quilt done and ready to show you and mm -hmm. it is going to be a free pattern for a very limited time for our april newsletter once i get it written <laughs> and finished All right she's gonna finish making the quilt so, writing the pattern. but i will hopefully have it here ready to show you on saturday it may not be bound but it will be done and um then you'll know how to make all those perfect half square triangles because it requires a lot. Yeah, see, so making 256 half square triangles. They're a lot of fun. They're, they're not a ton of fun, but I love half square triangles anyway, and I love how they look. So, can you show how to hand bind the corner? Oh, we absolutely. Didn't get there. Let's do that. I'm going to leave this here, and I'm, I have another needle on me because I'm, I'm that way. Oh, and you conditioned a piece and of I thread. And I already conditioned a piece of thread. Look Let's at do the that. corner. Thank Let's you. show how to do a corner. But yes, anyway, so join us Saturday, and we will show you how to spin seams. We'll turn some of the half square triangles into a pinwheel, and we'll show you that too, just because we might as well, because we're making half square triangles. Right. And, so and long one of the methods makes four at a time. Right. So that'll be a pinwheel, because why not? So we'll turn it into that and show you how to spin seams. Jen's going to show you a corner All real right. fast, so how I'm going to zoom back in. How to do a corner. You're welcome, Lisa. We'll cover it. Okay. I gotta get, I wanna get over the top so you can Okay, you get this. over the top. I apologize, people. We're gonna move you around. Get closer. Don't get shaky. Seven o'clock, just like always, Chris. Like always. Like As always, like is... the last couple days, week. Last anyway, week. we're just gonna keep doing these. The plan generally is like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays at seven. Don't hold us to that. For a while. Um, but we'll let you know our schedule as we go. All right, so let me just get this. She's going to get to the corner. Started, and we'll get our way to the corner, and I'll show you how I do it. Now, like we were talking earlier, I like to reduce bulk. And so since the bulk on the front is on this side, I'm going to want the bulk on my back to be on this opposite side, which means I want the fold just right before I get to it. Yeah. I, at this point, put a... Uh, clip but this is when my Sorry, binding clip I'm leading over i put it right on the corner right yep. to the corner so it's gonna be except this one i must have gotten a little bulky it's not my best corner so you're binding with linen i am binding with linen yeah it's a little trickier it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be great 
It's okay. I'll get there. I just, I think I did an extra stitch on the front in that spot. So it's a little extra tight. So this is why you don't do extra stitches on the front. Yeah. You don't want to go too far. Otherwise you can't get what you need. All right. In the back. So I've got my fold just how I want it right there. Now take your clip. So now I'm going to take my clip and cover it like that. Make sure that rest of that corner is nice and secure. And even though I'm not totally covering up my stitch yet, I will by the time I get there. Because I'm grabbing just outside the stitch, then I'm reaching in here and grabbing my binding fabric. So I still have some adjusting I can do as I go. So what so I'm going to do is gonna I'm going to grab go into the corner and I'm going to grab the very corner of that top piece and pull it tight. And then what I like to do is grab essentially the corresponding spot on the other binding. The other side. On the other side corner and, and pull, pull it, it tight. tight. And I'll go back out to the corner. Um, this is when I'm, I'm one of those people and I go ahead and, and go up the side. Up my you don't absolutely have to do this, but like I said, if you enter your quilt into a quilt show, they will look and see if they you did this. They will check and see if you did that. Um, so, yeah, you just do two like stitches the up finish. the side. And then I'm just going to put my needle and in. And then come all the way back. And push it back out right at the corner there. Mm -hmm. This is when I want a thimble because I'm pushing through a lot of bulk with that linen. Yeah. Like I said, you don't have to do that, but if somebody's judging your quilt, they will look and see if you did that. It is totally a personal preference. I've yet to ever enter a quilt to be judged. So I just do it because I like it. Uh, it just, it locks it in. Kind of like the diagonal line on the front. Right. It just this locks is, it this in. This is it on the back. It's just a little more finished. That's all. Yeah. And the people who are actually the quilt police will care. Um, Take that for what it's worth. Right. So that's how I do that. That's probably not the best corner because it wasn't my best corner on the front. But it's still pretty good. You'll see the bulk on the front is opposite the bulk on the back. So it's a little bit heavier. Or not heavier. It's a little more balanced. Um, you can totally do it the other way. I just, this is my preference. Oh, I'm bleeding. Hmm. She poked her finger. Whoops. Oh, well. But look, where'd that little red spot go? There's no red on this quilt. <laughs> In mean, binding, I bleed on almost every quilt I make. It happens. It's mine. If anybody needs my DNA, it's right here. Or it's there in me. All right. Do you hands? Um, no. no. I don't do the front corner. Because I lock it when I do it on the diagonal. I don't find that I need to do it on the front because that stitch is already locked down on the bottom piece. I think if I, if I were to make a quilt where I expected to enter it in a show, I would do it just because somebody's going to look at it. Um, but... I've never ever hand stitched the front of a binding like that on a corner because I don't think it's necessary, but nope. Personal opinion right here. All right. That's it. But, but it is good to know that if you do expect to enter it in a show or a competition, you might ask what the judging requirements, what they're going to look for on that. I mean, and honestly, what, that's like three more stitches. So yeah, way. it's not a big deal to add that on just to be yep. careful. Anyway, that's it for... Finding. Hope y'all have a good night. Good. Yeah, weekend. every quilt should have some DNA. I agree. Uh, be between all the spitting I do on needles and thread and yeah, if you ever blood. need a sample of my DNA, just find a quilt. It's got right. Be good. It's it's everywhere. You don't have to look in my hairbrush. Just just take this to the lab. They got it. Um. Anyway. Yeah. But have a good night, y'all. Have a good this night. This is fun. We'll Again. see you uh Saturday, and we'll talk half square triangles. And, and we'll have a big, have bright, a fun new, fun project, to show new you. project that is nice and cheery because we need cheery things. We have to stay happy. Oh, I have to show you the pillow I made. Oh, yeah. So I know we were doing the back of it earlier. This is from our retreat that I never got to make, but I finally made it last night because you know what? It's, it's sunny days and we need to have happy sunny days and find the joy that we can because... It's not, it's not going to find us always without making a little bit of effort. So we need to find, look for the sun. It's there. Yeah. Anyway, have a good night. We will see you all 
or we will virtually virtually see you. be back together on Saturday. All okay, right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.